This is my model Eric and as you can tell he's got a beautiful mop of grey hair and we are going for a light graduated flat top today. I'm going to start by setting in a baseline within the natural shape of his hair. So I don't wash, I don't wet because I want to work with the shape that he combs his hair into the next day. So baseline, baseline, baseline work an old clipper over comb then i'm going to wet the hair there is some old rusel product in there which i'm using in my blow drying so once the hair is dry i'm going to start on top by setting in a square shape clipper over comb now remember this is just removing bulk and looking for that final shape De redefining the length on the side following that previous cut baseline and as you can tell by using clipper over comb what I do is um, well pretty much my credo is what you see is what you get so because of the blow drying and seeing the final shape it's just working from that baseline refining refining till you're happy with that shape and how the sides connect to the top a little bit of freehand to perfect those square angles. Remember, hair is an organic product, so sometimes a little bit of freehand cutting in front of the mirror will actually refine the shape from somebody's personal shape of hair, especially with gray hair that can stick out a little bit. Okay, as you can tell, um, refining now, I like to use clipper over comb instead of guards, but if you want to switch to guards at this point, that would be a perfect way of working because you will use the baseline as your connection point with the guards. Personally, I like doing clipper over comb because then I work with the shape. As you can tell here, using the width of my comb as a guard one, refine, refine, refine. Again, what you see is what you get. I try to cut the hair as I would, as a sculptor would do with uh, marble or granite. Yeah, tapering everything in, going from a zero. This is my one, 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 and then using the lever of the clipper. See one. Here again, losing hair, removing bulk, and here without the comb, so without the guard, using different lengths with the lever to taper everything in. Removing a lot of bulk on that crown area. And again here, my most important tools are my eyes. Freehand looking, and you can see the shape emerge. That is a beautiful shape, working with his face, working with his hair type, pretty much do exactly the same on this side what I've done on the other side. Now I want to keep the shape nice and square when I look at it. On the other hand I want it to be a bit of a commercial haircut so um, ar around the crown area I slightly round the edges of the haircut. Using the white teeth of my cutting comb and my texturizing scissors Again, using uh, my elbow and my shoulder that I lock in to perfect that shape. So I'm using my texturizing scissors as I would use normal scissors or clippers. But especially in Eric's really, really thick hair, this is adding texture. But it's even more like, well, when, again, talking about the sculptor, the closer he gets to his final shape, his final sculpture, his final artwork, the more subtle his tools get. So you start with removing bulk. And as you can tell here, this is like my sending paper, just smoothing everything out. And I think that part of the success of our barbershop is that we really look not just to the wish, not just what, um, what the clients asks for, but also what works on the client. Because I want the client to come back telling me, Rob, I don't know what you did, but my hair looked better than ever. Even after six weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, it's still so easy to manage. Taking out bulk, putting in some extra texture. And as you can see, 
my comb starts to really slide through. This is a beautiful, very, very easy to manage haircut. Blending in the sides, working on the outlines with my trimmer, keeping um, the outline nice and white. You want to keep it, well, barbering is not just about what you cut up, sometimes it's about what you leave on. And especially with hair as beautiful as this, try to keep it nice for what show off that hair. Here we pretty much are going to the final stage of the cut. Going over, it's polishing. It's polishing. If you got some extra time left, this is what you do to really work on that flat top shape. See, it is a flat top because the crown is really short, but it doesn't look like a flat top because of the wave in the front. So you get that nice crossover between a pompadour and a flat top and a quiff. Um, using the rules of fiber, absolutely amazing product for all hair types now because this hair is really thick i'm going to add just a drop of the ruzo fiber gel these two go great together see slicking it back you can see the shape and after this i'm going to wet my hands a little bit to make the product work again and that is my final little trick important that the client sees at this point like oh i can do this at home that for me is how you really make a product work. And here we go. So I think personally, this is a very fast way of working, but giving a client a signature haircut that he can really show off. Eric with his flat top, the scoring way.